Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the only one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. For this video, I want to do a casual sketchbook session using primarily Canadian art supplies, some of which I actually had used for the very first time for this video. And as always, I will have all the supplies I use listed in the description down below in case you wanted to check them out for yourself. As for the actual subject matter that I will be drawing and painting today, I had asked my wonderful patrons for some suggestions on what they wanted to see me to draw. So I have two pages here that I'm going to show you, one where it's kind of a assortment of things, and then the second page is of some characters from the League of Legends TV show Arcane, which I have been currently a little bit obsessed with. But before we dive into the video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. I am personally not the most proficient when it comes to web design or coding, but thankfully the website editor on this platform is really intuitive to use and it updates in real time as you're working on it, which makes for a really seamless experience. For me, I am able to use Squarespace to showcase the variety of types of content that I create all in one place from my illustrations, my YouTube videos, and even my Instagram feed. But the platform is not limited to just that. You can also use it to have an online shop, booking services, and more. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now onwards to the video. So like I mentioned at the top of the video here, over on my Patreon page, I asked my amazing supporters to give me some drawing suggestions, whether it be objects, themes, characters, etc., based on these Canadian art supplies that I am using. So I had sent them a little photo of all the different supplies I'd be using, and I thought that it'd be nice for to get some opinions and suggestions uh, what they thought or what came to mind for them when they saw these colors. So yeah, I got um, a lot of really great suggestions and I wish I could have gotten to them all, but in the end, I settled on some lavender, a robin, a crystal, in this case, some amethyst, a perfume bottle, and something from the Wes Anderson film, Moonrise Kingdom. So to start, I was most curious about trying out the handmade gouache by Beam Paints, which I actually had purchased nearly a year ago, but had never found the time to try them out. They have a variety of different color selections, but I had decided to go with this one since I am such a huge sucker for cool tones colors. And I really just, I was so in love with how the paints are nestled into this slice of birch. It makes for such a unique looking palette and something about it just feels extra Canadian. The paints themselves took a moment to activate, but I was happy to see that the colors were exactly the same as what you see in the palette to when you use it to paint with. And then here you can see I am now working with the stone ground watercolor paints, which are also handmade in Canada. I have used these before and I made a YouTube video about it earlier in the year. I would like to grab a few more colors from them to fill out this watercolor palette, but I am so indecisive. So hopefully one day I'll finally get around to it. I think I've got room for maybe four more colors or so. But in any case, they are really nice watercolors. And if you are interested in hearing a more in-depth thought process behind using them or review, I should say, I will link that video in the little um, corner up above if you want to check that out. And uh, yeah, in any case, they, when my, one of my patrons had suggested something from the film Moonrise Kingdom for this video, it initially made me think of all the really warm, earthy tones that occur for the most, the majority of the film. So I was kind of curious as to what I would draw if I chose to do that. But then I remembered the character Susie, who I did draw here. She wears this adorable baby pink coat, this bright magenta beret, and that teal blue eyeshadow, which definitely went perfect with, perfectly with the color selection that I had here. And I think that 
she really compliments this perfume bottle that I put her next to uh, very well. And yeah, for those of you who are familiar with my work, you'll know that I primarily draw and paint characters and people, but surprisingly, I actually found for this page that the perfume bottle ended up being, I think, one of my favorites from this, this spread. I think that capturing all the different reflections and subtle tones to create that shiny appearance was really satisfying to do. My second favorite painting from this sketchbook session was this chonky little robin that I painted, which also surprised me since I don't paint birds very often and I actually didn't really know how this was going to turn out. Initially, I thought it was gonna be hideous, but in the end, after I did the beak and the eye, I felt like it really came together. And yeah, there was something really freeing about painting so loosely and just having all the different colors bleed and blend into one another. I normally have a much cleaner, almost graphic approach to most of my illustrations, but in the spirit of just keeping things casual and experimental with the Robin in particular, I decided to give it a much more painterly look and overall just it has a much more watercolor look, which maybe that doesn't make sense because of course I am using watercolor and gouache for all of these illustrations. But I think that because I'm so particular about how I use the paints that sometimes they come off as too smooth maybe or too rendered, which is not a bad thing, but there is a beauty in letting watercolors sort of spread and bleed um, more organically. And I don't do that very often in my work. I'm very tight and kind of controlled about it. And so with that Robin, I kind of like the kind of, kind of blooming effect and just being able to see the paint in its more organic or raw form, I suppose. And yeah, I think that overall this page is just much more lighter and looser than my usual work. And I think that is something that I really want to carry into more sketchbook sessions because again, I feel as though I put so much pressure on creating, you know, beautifully rendered illustrated pieces of work when a sketchbook doesn't necessarily have to be that. And I think that there is a lot to learn and a lot to play around with, just going in with a much lighter hand on these things. And part of that was due to the fact that this is actually a mixed media sketchbook. And so the paper in this sketchbook is actually a lot lighter and thinner than the typical watercolor paper that I would use. And so knowing that I wanted to make sure I didn't overwork the paper. And so that's why in a way it kind of forced me to use fewer layers and to have a much more relaxed approach to this. Cause I knew that the paper could only handle so much layers and so much pa uh, paint. And so in a way, this kind of, this limitation of the paper gave me wiggle room or it kind of forced me to approach the illustrations and the painting process a little bit differently. And this is the beauty of just experimenting and using lots of different types of mediums and supplies is that you end up kind of stretching your creativity in ways that you normally wouldn't have if you're always using the exact same supplies over and over.
Then moving on to the second page of the sketchbook spread, at the request of a few of my patrons, I had to do some characters from the new League of Legends animated TV show, Arcane. I personally am actually not a gainer, uh, gamer, and while I had heard about League of Legends for a while now, and recognized Jinx's character design specifically from seeing so many people cosplay her at conventions over the years, I really was not familiar with the game's lore at all. So initially, I had written off watching Arcane, assuming that I had needed to be a fan or have to have some kind of background knowledge of the game in order to understand the show. But after hearing so many people rave about it, seeing all the fan art, I was feeling that FOMO and could not resist. In the end, I am very glad I decided to watch it because it really is a phenomenal series and I was definitely able to follow along the journey and enjoy it regardless of having no prior knowledge of the story or the characters. I think that the show did a really good job at building this world and giving you enough backstory and um, just good storytelling and introduction to the characters that I didn't ever feel as though I was missing out on any information. I feel like a lot of people could enjoy this show as well without having any knowledge of the game. So if you have been on the fence about watching it for that reason, I definitely think that you should give it a go. So the central characters for the series is Vi and Jinx, who I have chosen to draw here. After I had finished watching the show, I knew I had wanted to make some kind of fan art for it, and very conveniently, two of the colors in this watercolor palette suit the hair colors for each of these characters, so it really just felt like it was meant to be. Contrary to what I had discussed about approaching this sketchbook session with the first page about, you know, keeping things light and loose, I ended up very much getting carried away when working on these portraits. And by carried away, I mean in the sense that I got caught up with going in uh, with my usual portrait painting mindset of wanting to fully render out the shading which like I mentioned earlier is not the this is not the right paper for that approach for using tons of water and layering because again it is a mixed media paper and the way that I typically ap approach my watercolor portraits is that I do many many layers and use lots of water and to build up those values and the shading and that is just not what I should have been doing with this type of paper. That isn't to say that this paper is not good, it's just that the, the, the style of watercolor painting that I normally do is just not suited for this type of paper. I should have been reserving that for a heavier watercolor paper as opposed, as opposed to this light mixed media paper, which is not meant for that much you know, water absorption. But in any case, this, yeah, this unfortunately ended up being one of those cases where I really loved the sketches and I was initially very excited about, you know, the prospect of the outcome. But as I continued to paint, I became less and less enthusiastic about it. And yeah, this is actually something that I'm sure a lot of you can relate to and it's something that I get asked about pretty often about, you know, how to stay motivated to finish something, especially when you're losing steam or you're unhappy with how it's turning out. And honestly, it really is not easy to push through those phases. But I think that in this case, one of my main motivators was the fact that I was filming this for a video, so it kept me accountable to finish it. So. Thank you for watching my videos and, you know, being a motivator for me to finish things. 
But another silver lining with working on this though was that it was in my sketchbook and I reminded myself that it didn't need to be a masterpiece that you know even if the finished product is not something that i'm in love with i should at least try to enjoy the process of making it so in the end it's still worthwhile time spent because i know that a lot of the times we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, when we are making art that it has to be something amazing that it has to be something that we are extremely proud of um, otherwise it's a waste of time or a waste of art supplies but I think that if you try and reframe your mindset to be that you're not wasting your art supplies, you're not wasting your time, you're still playing around, you're still using your time and energy into making something and you're, whatever that you experience during the art making process, you're going to learn and grow from it and take it into the next piece, even if the result of you know what you're working on is not something that you absolutely love. And so re-reminding myself of that, I was able to just, you know, I think become less precious about these pieces and less precious about, you know, how I was so in love with the sketches and that I felt like, you know, I had quote unquote ruined them with this, with the painting process of this. And yeah, that kind of allowed me a little bit of freedom in terms of just being a little bit more carefree about it. And so you can see I'm going in with these like pretty drastic or dramatic like blue shadows in the faces and then I went like really kind of messy in painting the the background there just straight up with that ferris wheel ink and yeah you know just enjoying the process of it there was something really satisfying about putting down just such a potent um, amount of blue ink down. Unfortunately, I did, you'll see, I do end up smudging Jinx's face here. I have a tendency to do that because I rest my hand like directly on the surface of the page. And so unfortunately, I didn't let the kind of pupils of her eyes dry and I do my best to very quickly try and scrub out the smudging, you know, smudged watercolor that I did on her face. Not perfect, but it was good enough. And again, just knowing that this was not meant to be a super perfect illustration. It was just meant to be something fun in my sketchbook. I was able to be, you know, at peace with making that little blunder. And then here we are going in with the Ferris wheel fountain pen, which it is so satisfying to use. I will say though, I think I'm still much more accustomed to doing line art with a paintbrush. The thing about this fountain pen or fountain pens that I have experienced using before, or dip pens I should say, like nibs, is that you don't get quite as much variation in your lines. And so, especially the like really detailed areas like around the eyes and the eyelashes, I prefer being able to have that flexible nib to get that little flick to have the variation in the width of the line. Whereas with this found pen in particular, everything is pretty uniform, but that is something that is beneficial if that's what you're looking for. And I do enjoy being able to just freely draw without having to constantly dip the nib into the ink, which is something that you would have to do if you're using like a nib dip pen or using a paintbrush. So there is a, a lot of convenience in using a found pen that just has the cartridge into in it. But yeah, I did end up using a paintbrush for some areas to get a couple different colors in there um, and as well as getting into those really, really fine detailed areas around the eyes. As I was saying earlier, I absolutely loved Arcane, and I think that one of the strongest things about the series is the character designs. 
Vi is probably my favorite character overall, but I would also like to draw Echo and probably Mel as well at some point because both of their designs are also very, very cool. Light spoiler ahead just for a moment here, but I will. I just wanted to say that I think the fight sequence between Echo and Jinx was probably one of the highlights of the show for me because you know, the style choices that they ch they took for the animation just was incredible. And it makes me really excited to see what kinds of directions they'll take in the future and what it can look like for animation in general to kind of take those risks and to just really push the boundaries of what you can do with animation. And lastly, I end up going in with a little bit of color pencil on these portraits, kind of in hopes of trying to bring them to a place that I was going to be a little bit happier with them, trying to salvage them in some way. But overall, I don't think it made a huge difference, which it's okay. I have to just accept that they are not perfect. And yeah, originally I didn't intend to use colored pencils since I wanted this video to only contain Canadian art supply companies and I actually don't own any Canadian made colored pencils but I couldn't resist since I will say that I think colored pencils work really nicely on this paper and I think moving forward I will probably that'll be the main medium I use for this sketchbook. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope that I was able to keep you company while you maybe worked on something or that you enjoyed just watching the process and hearing me ramble on about it. And thank you so much for your support and watching my content. I hope that you have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.